Hello and welcome. I am the Student Tai Dippin' Chew Guy, and this is the number 14 review of Series 1. Series 1 being long cut straight. And somebody with a close eye may be saying right now, wait a minute, we just did review 12. What happened to 13? Well, Klondike, as you just saw, was 13, and 14 was Seneca. But after looking over the product list of Seneca, the company, I've decided to remove it from the straight series and the wintergreen series, and I'm going to have a separate series of just Seneca products somewhere down the road. Um, it's just be it's the way I have to order the stuff. It's the varying flavors they have. It, it, it just most of them can't be worked into a regular series anyway. That's basically it. Anyway, Klondike was unlucky 13, but it has been moved into the 14 spot vacated by Seneca, so we can leave 13 like a tall building. 13 is just sort of, it's the 13th floor, it's not really there, and neither is the 13 review. We're just skipping over it. That's it. And I'm not overly happy about the 14 review either because as I said this is Klondike and this is the half-sister product of the wonderful Decade and Derringer. Read sarcasm. Yes, um, although I say half-sister because unlike the other two which are made by CN Smokeless Tobacco Company of Grover, North Carolina and they, it is an LLC this stuff is made by Cheyenne International LLC of Grover, North Carolina. They like to advertise on their website, and yes, they do have a website, that they are in the heart of American tobacco country. And that's sort of false advertising, because although they may be in the heart of it, they use 100% foreign tobacco in all of their products. They could have a factory literally in the middle of a tobacco field and they are still calling out for product. And Klondike is no different from Decade or Derringer. It is 100% foreign tobacco. It is a flimsy plastic can with a flimsy plastic lid. I will give them credit. The sticker that you're looking at on the lid is more aesthetically pleasing to the eye than the other two. It's a dark red burgundy background with white lettering and like a gold highlight, a goldish bronze highlight along the rim of the sticker and a couple points in the front there. Got the warning label. The side, yes, it has been cracked. I have done one take for this, and it ended very badly. And I'll get to that later. Okay, on the back, there is some sort of code, but as far as this company is concerned, I am not overly worried about whether this product is in date or not. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it. You don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to open this up and I'll show you inside. There is the lid. Okay. I don't want that in my pocket. When the first take I had to strike that take because I then went while the lid was on top and showed the bend of the can itself and that's when the can literally exploded like I had this stuff stuck like on my forehead there was some on my cheek my desk and you know what normally I'd be like oh my god I've wasted that not with this mm -mm. no I jumped to almost with glee and was like oh good I get to use the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, that was my that was my reaction to spilling dip everywhere. I get to use a vacuum cleaner to suck it up. Anyway, it is a dark brown product. 
probably registering more towards black. Moisture level is okay. After all, it's moist enough to stick to my face. The smell is the same as the other two, but the alcohol background is not as bad. It isn't, in, even when I first opened it, it was not as bad. The cut is... Not great, but I will give them credit. It is consistent in this. Whereas the cut was very inconsistent in the two other products, Decade and Derringer. It is a consistent length in this, and there are no... Nothing that I'd suspect is a stem that I've found thus far anyway, and I've pretty much seen a lot of it now everywhere. I'm going to take a pinch of this, and I'm going to hit pause, and I will be back. It does leave a resin on the hands, so you might want to have a towel around, paper towel or whatnot. I'll be back in a second. And I am back. All right. Start out with something positive here. It's comfortable in the mouth. Um, there are floaters, but it does stay fairly formed. It is comfortable on the gum and the lip. Um, the flavor, it's not that great. Uh, it's, it's just not a good flavor. I mean, yeah, it's straight. You wouldn't mistake it for anything else. You can tell that it's supposed to be a straight, but... Outside of that, it's not overly sweet. It's, which isn't, I mean, some people don't like stuff that's real sweet. And I get it. That's why a lot of people don't like straight. But at the same time, you don't exactly want bitter either. And it, it sort of leans to the bitter side. Um, consistency in this can, it's all cut the same. The cut's not great, but at, at least, you know, it looks like they tried on that part. Um... The tobacco may very well be of a higher quality. Uh, I didn't see anything, and when I had it paused, I did check. I rooted around a little bit, and I, I didn't see anything that I would mistake as stem material, which the other two products, Derringer and especially the Decade, it, it had to be stems. I, I, I can't see what else it would have been. Um, the smell, you know, the alcohol background thing I was talking about. It's been brought down. And when I say alcohol, because somebody commented, uh, I don't mean like, the, the, they're not trying for like a Copenhagen black here. It's not like bourbon alcohol. It's like they soak the stuff to kill something in grain and then pressed it, the tobacco, to get the grain out of it. it it's not a good alcohol by any means. I'm not going to go as far to say as rubbing alcohol, but I mean, it's leaning towards that more than a bourbon flavor. Anyway, um, you know, it, it, it's a budget, budget dip, and I can't stress budget enough on it. I mean, you'd have to be, look, if you're down to the point where you're an adult and your finances are in such bad shape that you're reverting to this, then I, tobacco is a luxury item. Maybe you can't afford luxury item. I hate to put it that way, but I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to get, I'm trying to get across how desperate one would be to willingly use this stuff. As soon as this video is done, I'm taking it out. Uh, this can will be saved like the Decade and the Derringer, but the contents like the Decade and the Derringer will be binned, trashed. It's just not good. Okay, it's not as bad as the Derringer or the Decade, but it's not good at all. Um, you know, the, the smell doesn't have so much alcohol in the background. The taste doesn't have so much, but it's not a good taste. It's not something I could ever enjoy. I, I can't see myself in any mental state where I'd ever be like, ooh, Klondike. No, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um... It's just not good stuff, okay? And I, you know, I set out in the series, and I said, you know, I'm not going to trash talk any companies, but, I, you know, it, there's really nothing good to say about this stuff. It's just the way it is. 
And if I'm going to be honest in a review, I mean, if somebody out there is going to base whether they buy something on something I said, you know, I have to have a degree of honesty with what products you shouldn't buy. And this is probably one of them. And definitely, definitely the Decade and Derringer. I, I, there, there's just no excuse for those two. Anyway, I am the suit and tie dip and chew guy. I thank you for watching. If you liked any of the videos or get any information out of them, uh, please subscribe. Hit like if you watch them through. This has been the Klondike Straight review. I thank you again. Do take care of yourselves and God bless.